Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm really excited about this topic today. So um, we, the Independence Chamber has been doing these key to success series since we have all gone into quarantine mode. So these, I think everybody's finding them very helpful. Um, we've had some great interaction during the actual events themselves, and then we've had lots of views afterwards. So these videos are live right now, and then you will be able to see them on our Facebook page later. So make sure, and um, if you didn't get to catch the whole thing, check that out. But um, I'm ready to just dive into today's topic because it's, it's obviously a very timely topic. Um, we've never gone through these times before. And so we're constantly trying to deal with our, our own mental health, our children's mental health, our employees' mental health. So um, we've brought some experts in today. And so we have two people from Comprehensive Mental Health Services. We have Samantha Griggs and Carrie Bond. And um, I'm gonna pass this over real quick because I would like each of them to uh, let you know who they are, and then we're going to jump into the um, questions. And if you have questions, please put those into, uh, type those in, and we will get those answered also. But um, Samantha, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So, hi, my name's Sam. Um, I have worked in community mental health for about the last seven years, and I am a provisionally licensed professional counselor, actually pending my full licensure. I just recently turned in my application and I'm waiting for the approval. So very excited about that. Um, so I presently serve as a um, counselor team lead for our school-based therapy services. So I supervise a team of counselors who are placed in schools, who are working with um, adolescents who have mental health issues, and I also carry a caseload of my own, so I'm actually seeing my own uh, set of clients um, to help them process mental health issues and just cope with everything they've got going on. So, Awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. I've been calling you Samantha. I will now call you Sam. So, uh -huh. All right. And Carrie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. I am basically the same position, only in the outpatient therapy at Kyle, the Kyle's building in Independence. So um, I do outpatient therapy, and then I also supervise the therapists that do outpatient therapy over here at the Kyle's building. Very good, very good. So um, I'm guessing you guys have, obviously I've, I've heard it probably a million times. I wish I had a dime for every time I heard it. These are unprecedented times, <laughs> and they, they certainly are. And I'm curious what, are you guys dealing most with right now? Well, I think right now um, we're dealing with individuals who are trying to learn to cope with um, the change. There's been a lot of change, a lot of loss, um, loss in regards to our normal daily routine structure, just what to expect on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, we've been dealing with just increased stress, a lot of fear. Um, there's a lot of fear of, you know, what if I get sick? What if a loved one gets sick? Um, so I think those have been the most pressing issues that I have noticed come up for um, our clients. I would agree wholeheartedly. Um, I am also seeing some increased anxiety, increased irritability. Um, parents who are having having their kiddos trying to work with them in the home and figure out schooling and the stressors of like like Sam said, those fears going on on top of some of the financial struggles on top of having to try and do homeschooling. And it's it's a lot right now. It is just absolutely a lot. It is a lot right now. And yeah, I've never had to sit at my dining room table and work before while both of my children are home. And that is definitely a new one for me. And I know I've seen a lot of parents going through that. What are some of the things that you're telling parents on, on how to cope with? I mean, I have noticed being a little bit more irritable. You know, I don't have the patience I've had in the past. Um, so what does, what are you telling parents that are going through this right now? 
Um, I start out with recommending that they kind of put some structure in place and some consistency in place, things that they can depend on. We get up, we get up and have breakfast at nine and then we're going to start school at 10 and then we're going to, you know, as much as possible, build in a routine to keep sleep patterns in place so the kids aren't as tired, so parents aren't as tired. And I'm also recommending that they use the resources that are out there. A lot of the schools have these resources where they can call the teachers during these times. Um, for some reason, that's where my head is at right now is with the kids and the and the parents who are trying to um, help them with school. And you know, you're ha you'll have a, a five-year-old, a fifth grader, and then a junior in high school. And those are very different levels of education to be helping them with. And so um, just pulling in those resources, um, getting Zoom up and going, getting teams, up, you know, whatever you need to do to stay in contact with the people who can support you in doing that, I think is a really important piece. Yeah, in addition to um, structure and using resources, I've encouraged my families to incorporate them time, like you time, self-care. You know, it it can be really easy to get focused on, oh, we have to get all these tasks done, done, and yes, that's important, but we also need to take time for ourselves, take a break, take a breather, get outside, take a walk, um, do a fun activity with your kids. Um, and then also have grace for yourself is another huge thing I've been talking to parents about. Um, you know, you see a lot of you know, when you're exposed to social media and that kind of stuff, you see a lot of now's a great time to pick up an old hobby that you used to have. Or you see these people that are accomplishing all these things. And I tell my parents, it's enough to just get through the day and to be alive and to be well. And so, you know, just having love and patience and kindness with one another right now, it seems to be, I mean, that's a win in my book if you get through the day and you're able to demonstrate that somehow. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I love, I love that, having grace with yourself. And I think, you know, having grace with the situation and your kids and just understanding we're, we're all trying to deal with it and not knowing quite how to deal with it. Um, so with those kiddos that, you know, they don't understand quite what's happening, um, they see that parents and how they're reacting how can parents talk to, I know it's going to be different based on if you have that five-year-old or that fifth grader or that junior in high school, it's going to be a different conversation with each of them. With those, the littler ones at home, how do you speak to them about what's happening without scaring them, but letting them be a little bit more comfortable with what's happening? I think it's important to ask them what their questions are, because I, it's it's easy to assume that they have the same concerns as adult that we do as adults and we and they don't you know their question their questions may be very very different and real easy to answer on their level and for where they're at um, I, I think that those conversations especially with the little ones need to be peppered in with a lot of reassurance um, and I think for any age, it's assuring them that we're in this together. You know, we're going to make these decisions. We're going to do this together. You are not by yourself. If you have any, if you want to talk to me about it any time, come talk to me. Don't sit and worry about it. Come talk to me about it. Um, and making sure that it's an open dialogue that can happen anytime, whether that's it, you know, breakfast or at 10 o'clock at night when their kiddo is laying in bed having thoughts going through their heads you know and I think it's to really listen to what it is they're concerned about because it, it really may not even blip our radar yeah and I think it's important to um, access resources at this time for that there's a lot of great resources out there on how to talk about the pandemic at an age appropriate level with our kids. For example, the school that I work at, um, Grain Valley School District, I, I work out there, um, they had sent out um, a resource of a book that you can do like a read along with elementary age students that explains the virus in a very um, comforting um, and age appropriate way. 
And um, so those are great resources to use. And then also, um, you know, modeling for the kids, you know, how to cope and how to deal with everything going on. So being willing to talk about it, being calm when you talk about it, um, I think is really important to helping them stay calm. And um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm, what I'm gathering out of this, it's communication is definitely the key, but it's not just communicating, it's listening to, I, I love that because yeah, what they're thinking of might not be where your brain is at this moment. So when you're talking to them about your your issues or what you're thinking it might be, they may be like, I don't get it. What are you talking about? You haven't, and that's not what I'm worried about. Right. Absolutely. So to now flip this just a little bit, um, for businesses, you know, the owners of a small business or managers, even in, in large corporations that haven't had to do this before, but you're trying to lead your employees through a time that you don't know what's going on with. So how as a business owner that I have my three employees that I'm trying to keep them okay, how do I keep myself okay during this? I think that a lot of it is knowing where you're at kind of emotionally on any given day, because I think there are some days that are harder than others. And I think we all have different, you know, I, I've had some days where I've come in to work and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get myself kind of, re you know, regulated and calm down. Um, and I think it's being open and honest about that, you know, talking about the emotions that we're going through and then acknowledging that our employees are going to be going through the exact same range of emotions on any given day and to know that they might not be in the same place we are on the same day. Um, I think it's having that really open dialogue about where are you at right now? What is it you need right now? Um, okay, well, here's what I'm thinking, you know, when it comes to because different people are going to have different ideas about what's going to be safe and what's going to be advantageous going forward. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot of listening to that and then making decisions on, you know, what you think is the best course. But I think it's that really collaborative um, listening and reassuring people, you know what, I am really trying to figure out what the safest and best course of action going forward is going to be. And I want to hear what you have to say, too. Where are you at? And I think that that collaborative piece is going to be really important. Yeah, I think um, in regards to taking care of self while also taking care of employees, um, it's really easy to give advice to your employees of like ways to cope. But sometimes we forget to apply those to ourself. So make sure that if you are you know, giving the advice um, of ways to cope, telling your staff you need to take breaks, you mm -hmm. need to have grace, you know, try eating well, um, avoiding uh, alcohol and tobacco, um, that you also are incorporating those coping skills into your own life um, so that you too are able to cope and deal with the situation and be the leader that you need to be at your uh, organization or at your, your job. Right. Using using those breaks throughout the day to go do something healthy, inviting them to go do something healthy too. you know, take a walk, go spend some time in the sunshine, um, whatever those things that are available are. Yes, absolutely. It's it's hard to remember when you're trying to keep a company going. You know, it's all you can think about is I've got to be able to open my doors again and I can't stop and breathe. Um, I think it's going to eventually, it's going to eat at you eventually if you don't take a couple minutes to, to stop and breathe and do all those things you're telling your employees to do. Absolutely. So we've had these, these different ways of working. Um, and normally we are, for the most part, most people are in an office in a day-to-day -day work situation. We do have some people that work from home, but 
what what about that person that has normally been used to working in an office, but now they're at home and maybe they don't have a family at home with them. So it's it feels very isolated. So what are some tips on not feeling so isolated when you're home alone all the time? I think it's going to be using, you know, luckily we live in an age of cell phones and um, screens and ways to connect. I think that's going to be a really important tool, you know, getting seeing people's faces, even, you know, calling is fine, emailing, texting, you know, those are all touch points that, that build some connection. But there really is something about seeing the person you love's face, <laughs> you know, whether that's a grandbaby or a cousin who lives in California, um, you know, or whoever that is, being able to laugh together and see each other's faces. And I think that's, you know, we've got all, and there are all these free apps to do that. And not everybody has access to them, but if they do, if you know somebody who doesn't know how to use it, like, a lot of a lot of the older generation sometimes are are intimidated by setting up a Zoom account, setting up Skype. You know, maybe take that time to help your neighbor do that. Take the time to help your aunt do that. You know, talk or talk him or her through it, and then all of a sudden they it they feel a little bit more of that connection. Yeah, and I would say from like a business owner standpoint. Um, staying connected with your staff. So our agency has really done a great job of supporting and encouraging us as leaders to stay connected and maybe even more connected with our staff than we normally would. So we're doing, you know, at least once a week supervisions with our staff. We're um, so, and that's going to be on a video chat platform where we actually can see them and just connect and make sure that everything's going okay so that they feel supported. Um, and then, of course, we have, you know, text message and emails and we stay connected with them that way. So, I would just encourage, um, even if you've had a, I would encourage business owners that even if you have a staff member who you feel like you know really well, that's worked with you for a really long time, just increasing how often you do interact with them. Um, just to increase connectedness during this very disconnected time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it is weird. We are not together, but sometimes a little bit more together. I have definitely felt that I've reached out to more people through, you know, Zoom and video chats than I would have ever reached out before. So mm -hmm. it is nice to see a face and I, I wonder how much of this is our new normal. And it almost is weird to talk on a phone without seeing a face at this point for me. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but. Um, so another topic that has come up is, so the, the world feels like it's getting ready to reopen again. We're going to start seeing businesses reopening and, you know, it's it's an anxious time because, first of all, we don't know what to expect yet. Um, I think there is a lot of fear behind that. You have some people that are ready to run out into the world and do everything like normal again. And you have some that are a little fearful of what this looks like going back out into the world. Um, what kind of information do you have that could help with those anxieties or fears of getting back into the real world again? I think it's going to be really important to be compassionate and respectful of all the different levels of emotion that go through that. Like you said, you're going to have that full spectrum. You're going to have people who are going to jump in with both feet and, you know, want to run up and hug everybody. <laughs> and then there's going to be the people who are like, yeah, don't touch, you know, back, 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 back. And I think it's, a, it's going to be a lot of communication and a lot of respecting of the boundaries for people and to make them comfortable um, and let it let this kind of play out in a way that let people tiptoe in or step in or do what they need to do while still respecting each other's boundaries and needs. And I think that's going to be a really important piece of all of this. Yeah, that was the main thing that came to my mind was 
even if you are an individual who is not experiencing fear and is very eager to get back out there to just remember to respect the individual's space and boundaries that are experiencing fear and to validate that, um, to not make light of it, um, you know, to just really validate and respect that by allowing them to practice social distancing in a workplace. Um, if they still want to only communicate via email, even though they're at the office, if that works for your business, then by all means, please respect that so that they can work through that fear at the pace that they need to, um, because it could cause undue stress um, for individuals to be thrust into a, a very fearful situation. Um, so another thing that had crossed my mind when considering this point was if you have the opportunity to do a slow in reintegration back into the workforce, um, definitely take that opportunity. I understand some places they have to open their doors and they have to go back to full capacity as quick as possible, um, just for the well being of the business in general. But if you have the opportunity to maybe slowly integrate half of the workforce back in, um, maybe an alteration where you know you're doing the at home work and some office based, um, that could be very helpful to just have it not be so sudden. And so that won't be quite as traumatic for individuals who are really struggling with the fear of exposure. Great. So I would love to get, so we've got a lot of, you know, I've heard fear and anxiety and irritability and, you know, a lot of us have anxiety. Um, anxiety, depression. So what are, I wonder if your top five are the same or if they're different, what are your top five tips for dealing with your anxiety? Just to kind of, you, you've said a bunch of it throughout this, just to kind of give a list of what are, I'm going through anxiety right now. What would yep. your top five tips be for me to get through that? <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, uh, I think the first thing is to acknowledge it and to recognize it. And like, like you guys, like we've said, give yourself grace and compassion for that. Anxiety makes sense right now. You know, anxiety makes perfect sense. Um, I think the second thing I would think about is I would look at things that have worked in the past. What, what has worked for you know, you or each individual in the past to kind of bring that down just a little bit. Like for me, I know it's it's stretching every morning. I stretch and I even like moved outside on my back deck because the tree came in so people can't see me and I don't have to be embarrassed <laughs> that I'm out there the stretching out, put the sun in the morning while I stretch outside. I know for me that works and works really well. Um, so what what do you know about yourself that has worked really well in the past? I think the third piece for number three for me would be um, some kind of loving connection with somebody, whether that is shooting off an email or a text to somebody, hey, love you, have a great day. I mean, it can be as simple as that. There's something about that that touch and that, that connection that brings down that anxiety because I think it makes you feel less alone in it. Um, even if you don't talk about it, it's not like you're, you know, calling going, oh, I'm having a really rough day and I need, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that. It can just be connection. I think four and five for me would probably be making sure that you are getting sleep as you know, getting good, healthy sleep. And also that you're probably, you know, keeping those healthy routines in place that help maintain your health. I don't know, Sam, what do you think? What did I miss? I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it is a hard one because um, it has to be so person centered because what works for me might not work for you. But some general tips that I do think collectively help, no matter who you are as an individual. Um, can going to mirror a little bit of what Carrie said. Um, practicing authenticity. Um, allow yourself to, when you do a check-in at a meeting or when somebody asks, how are you? We're in a culture that it is very common to say, I'm good. Everything's fine. It's okay to say that you're not doing okay. 
Um, I actually practiced it this morning. I had a coalition meeting and um, I, it's very easy for me to be like, yep, I'm good. Don't need help. But um, I said, you know what? There's a lot going on right now and I'm under a lot of stress. So just practicing that and giving that space, I think is really important. And it also models for other people that it's safe to not be okay and to ask for help. Um, so that would bring me to my second one is ask for help. Um, it's not a sign of weakness if you need help, if you need support. Um, I don't know a single individual in this world that can do it all on their own. Um, and you know, it, there, there is the saying, it takes a village. And so it is a sign of strength, I believe, when individuals are willing to ask for help and seek support. Um, and then some other just general um, anxiety relieving tips, um, get outside, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D. If you are in the house and you are noticing or you're in your office and you're extremely anxious and you're just not coping very well, change your location. Go outside, take a breath of the fresh air. That can really change things. Take a drink of ice cold water. That can help ground you and bring you back to the present so you can start to sort through those emotions or get to a place where you can be productive again. Um, another huge thing I think is um, exercise. Now, you don't need to go and, and run a marathon. I'm talking take a quick walk around the block, um, around the neighborhood, because getting those, get it, getting your endorphins moving, just getting your blood flowing can really help with decreasing anxiety symptoms. Um, and then, of course, plenty of sleep. That's extremely important. Limiting um, exposure to the media. You know, set a time limit. It's important to stay informed, but you know, overindulging can really amp those anxiety symptoms. So I would say definitely limit your, your media exposure um, to a certain time of day and a certain quantity of time so that you can make sure that you aren't overindulging in that. That, that definitely is true. I have found the days that I watch too much news <laughs> are definitely the days I'm feeling it a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a question come in from Facebook, so I want to read that out. It's from Lori Harp, and um, not just fear, but I suspect there will also be feelings of hostility for people who have to come back to work. Is that valid, and how would you handle that? I do think that individuals are going to feel angry. I think that um, anger can be can be linked to other emotions such as fear, um, and it can be a way to, that individuals express that fear as they're feeling angry, um, and they, you know, are not going to be very happy with an employer that's asking them to return to work. So I do think it's valid. Um, I think the best way to help an individual work through anger is to to validate it and listen. Um, you know, you don't have to agree with why they're angry, but just acknowledging that their emotions are, are true, they're real, they're experiencing that, and that they're very difficult emotions to experience can be extremely helpful in allowing that person to know, okay, this is a safe space to talk, I can talk through this, and then you can start to work towards a solution. Um, once you open that dialogue, they're gonna, they're going to disclose to you, hopefully, you know, what are some of the root causes of the fear? And you might be able to help them manage some of that um, or the root causes of the anger. And you might be able to address some of that with providing them information or developing something that, um, whether it be related to work schedule, work environment, that might work to help them feel more safe and secure. I think it's important, too, to understand that we are going through a collective trauma right now, and it's going to hit people on different levels. And one the basic responses to trauma tend to be fight, flight, or freeze. And so they can you can kind of almost guarantee that people are going to be falling into those categories at different times during this transition back into opening up you know we had some of that when everything shut down and now we're going to have it again as things open back up so I, I think it's a very natural reaction I think making sure that people know that they have choices um, that they're going to be heard like uh, you know like Sam said to validate it and to say well you know I can't make you do this. I'm giving you these opportunities and you have the option, you know, letting people know that they've got some agency within the decisions being made, I think is really important. 
Um, yeah, I think I, and that flight, you know, running away, not wanting to be around people, that can be what flight looks like. That fight can be that irritability. Um, the freeze can be kind of a shutdown or a numbing, you know, and I think those are all things that we can see and expect to see going forward a little bit that we're going to have to figure out ways to support people through. Absolutely. So I'm curious with um, comprehensive mental health services, what exactly is it that you guys do? Like what is it, what does a normal day look like for you guys? Well, we <laughs> a comprehensive kind of covers it. <laughs> We've got a lot, of, a lot of different parts and pieces. Um, we've got psychiatry, we've got um, case management, we've got substance use support, we've got outpatient therapy, we've got school services. What am I forgetting? <laughs> That's like I'm on five and I know we got way more than that. <laughs> um, supportive housing. Um, we've got all these different things. Um, and we've got, you know, you can come through intake. We're doing intakes and we're doing most 90% of our services right now are telehealth, which is really helpful for people. You know, people get to figure out their, their comfort level and we can support them without them having to come out. Um, so we've got a lot of different really cool programs. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the, the most important thing to remember is um, that community agencies are here to help support and that if you are needing additional support to outreach and um, to, you know, inquire if we have services that might help support you. So we've got the individual counseling, case management, um, group education, family counseling, medication management services um, for all varieties of presenting mental health issues and so just uh you know being aware that there's community resources here that we can we can help support you guys as you guys need that that's great How, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys so i would call our main in our main line um 816-254-3652 and get routed through intake and they'll be able to answer questions and help decipher decipher what service or program might be best to fit the presenting um need of the individual calling um so yeah awesome Awesome. Well, I thank you both so much today for doing this. I feel like I've learned some tips and tricks and to have a little bit more grace with myself, also with my children and a lot with my dogs because I haven't had a lot of grace with them lately. <laughs> but um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. And um, like they were saying, if if you need to get a hold of them for any reason, Sam gave the number. We can also um, post it up so you can get a hold of them later. But I really appreciate it. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining us today. And um, we have some more Key to Success series that are going to be coming up here soon. Um, we will announce those as soon as they're ready to go, because as of right now, we are still on the stay at home order till the 15th. So we'll have some more stuff we are doing. Um, but next week, it is not a key to success series, but we do have a business after hours coming up on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. It's going to be super fun. I'm really excited. I put a lot of work into this, so there's going to be prizes. I have a couple hundred dollars in gift cards to give out that day, so that will be super awesome. Um, come festively dressed because you can win gift cards that way. I've got my outfit picked out, so you're just going to have to register to see what that is. We will also be doing trivia questions and you need to get your Cinco de Mayo food from either Palomino's or Los Cabos because you can win gift cards for having your food from one of those places that day. So, and I just got the specials list from Palomino's and I was starving looking at it. So make sure, check out that event. You have to register to get the Zoom link. So please do that. And thank you for joining us today. I think this has been very helpful for me. I hope it was helpful for you too. So. We will see you at the next Key to Success series. Thank you.